Hello. Just arrived at the um, <coughs> Morrison's again. And today, the sun kind of came out today and then it went back in. It decided to go back in when I came out. So you have to kind of make an appointment with the sun, you know. Yeah, I'll take this off because there's no sun. Well, anyway, guys, um, I was going to say I've got an, an important announcement to make, but that's what everyone says. But it kind of is. I want to uh, clean up my act. Yeah, it's not an act, but clean up my language, you know, the words that I say. I do tend to use foul language. That's, you know, part of my upbringing. My dad used to swear a lot. So my mum didn't, but my dad used to really swear. I suppose it's part of me. I think swearing is not so bad if it's just a little, but if it's swearing all the time, yeah, that's it's nauseating. And I usually don't swear. It's just that, <clears throat> you know, when I make videos, <coughs> I am kind of more animated, you know. I might have a tea beforehand to give me some energy. <clears throat> or, um, you know, I might be talking about something that's really important. Or... Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Sorry, be quiet. Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's so snappy, that, that Sally. No. Luckily, I've closed the windows up to about there, but it still scares people. But it's her, it's Sally, it wasn't the boys, so that's okay. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm gonna now try and make my videos more clean. You know, it's difficult to stop, you know, a lifetime of a habit that you've done for a whole, a way of speaking that you, you know, you've spoken this way for a whole lifetime, it's difficult to, to stop <coughs> immediately. So, you know, when people say uh, less of that, you know, foul language or please don't use foul language, I've taken that on board, you know, that message and, uh, but it's difficult to stop immediately, you know. So if I can <clears throat> reduce by like 90%, that'd be brilliant, you know. And if I do say a bad word, I just cut it out. So then you guys don't see, you don't hear the bad words because I might have some teenagers maybe watching or some elderly subscribers or even just religious subscribers or people who don't, don't like to hear that word, you know, like to hear, uh, it, it, it's a foul language, you know, so I don't know whether you, for, for whatever reason, you don't like it. Well, some people like it. But YouTube definitely don't like it and they demonetize you. So that's not good. I'm already getting the estimated, my esti estimated revenue for this month is like one pound, sorry, 167, no, 170 now. If I get, if the, and that's how much I, I, I'm estimated to get maybe less, maybe more. It's not a lot, is it, for the whole month? So hopefully, as I keep saying, you know, but I don't have any time to, to do what I say I'm gonna do. Another bloody, guys, I got another <coughs> of those scam phone calls. Instead of pressing the red one, I pressed, I pressed the green. And then I then I pressed the red, you know, the um, to end the call. Yeah, so I was saying that, you know, I'm gonna clean up my act and uh, clean up my act. It's not an act. Clean up my way of thinking, you know. One minute. Sorry. Clean up my. <laughs> anyway, what I mean is, I'm going to talk without with less of the foul language and uh, and see how it goes. Probably people will get pissed off and say, "Look, we don't like this fake these fake videos of yours. We want to hear more swearing." You know, you can't really uh, <laughs> make everyone happy, as they say. But you know, definitely, YouTube does demonetize you if you use really foul language. Yeah, I, I got a message the other day, a comment saying something like, on the video where I speak about my parents, you know, that I love my parents and they're the best parents that I could have wished for. There was a, I'm not sure if it was a lady or a gentleman, a man or woman, said something like, now I understand he's kind of, or she's psychoanalyzing me, where the uh, racist attitude comes from. Racist <laughs> attitude, right? <laughs> right? So what I think the person means is in the video I said something that something about my genetic mother not my my real mother who is my adopted mother the Italian mother but the Chile Chilean mother who lives in London she was married to an English bloke and had two kids a boy and a girl she kept those two I was the in-between this this boy here this child here and she had me with her Spanish uh, boyfriend and she got rid of me because in 1967, a child born out of wedlock, you know, was taboo. So two years later, it wasn't, <coughs> it wasn't taboo. So basically, she had a son 
with a guy from Ghana. So I was saying in the video, I've got, uh, she had two white English kids with an English man. Then she had a black kid with a man from Ghana. And me, like the Spanish one or whatever I am, uh, she got rid of. So this person switched himself or themselves on and said, ah, okay. So the reason why he has racist attitudes is because his mo his mother rejected him for a black kid because she couldn't reject these other kids because these, these kids, you know, from, were from, from a marriage, but these two relationships were similar out of wedlock. And yet she kept this boy and she always talks well about him. And yet this one, he, she rejected. That's a fair point, really. That's a really good point. The only problem with that is I found out that I was adopted when I was 28 years of age and I had my R racist attitude much younger. Now, when I say I'm not saying racist because I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm racist, put it this way. The way, the way I am now, the way I was in my 40s, you know, 40s, 50s, is I'm much more mellow now than I was in my 20s or 30s. And in my 20s or 30s, you you could argue, I, I, I would, wouldn't say this, but you could argue that I was more racist than I am now. Now, what do I mean by the word racist? It means uh, not so tolerant and it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing. And what does the word racist mean anyway? We don't know because the, the the goalposts keep moving, don't they? Oh, this is what racism means and this is what racism means. If you're from another race, if you're like Asian, you're Chinese and you say something about a black person, no, you're not racist, that's nothing. But if you're white and you say, you must be racist, right? You know, so it depends who says it as to whether it's racist or not. So basically what it is, is a club to hit only one race. And you know which race it is white people it's the it's just it's just a weapon to use against one particular race because if other races do it then it's not racist but if one group does it then it's racist and what does racist mean it means it's evil and what do you do to evil people you have to punish them either by i'm not sure you physically punish them mentally punish them emotionally punish them they're evil and they have to be dealt with or they have to be shown up to be uh, this evil thing or this stupid thing, you know? And so when I get these comments, even though they're not bad comments, I mean, this person was, it wasn't a troll. It was actually, uh, you know, an interesting, an interesting um, evaluation or whatever, but it's wrong because when I was younger, say when I was in my twenties, I used to love like black music and used to like love hip hop, you know, and stuff like that and I used to go to some not I didn't used to go but I went in the in Clapham was it Clapham Clapham Junction you know there was there's a park there and there was a hip-hop thing and I went there with some friends and a black guy came boom and snatched my my chain he snatched it the day after my mum bought it for me it was a gold chain I wasn't it wasn't hanging out it was inside here inside the t-shirt one black guy, there was a black guy behind me and this guy maybe in his 30s. And I was only about 17 or 18. He came and snatched it off me. And I was so pissed off. And I was thinking, why do these black guys have to do this, you know? So I wasn't very tolerant at the time. But not because of one incident. There were loads of incidences. And I wish, you know, I don't wish, but <clears throat> for the sake of equality, I wish... It could have been some Asian guys, some Italian, Spanish, white guys that would have done bad to me. But no, they were all black, young black men. All of these were black men, just in case, I'm not going to say it, but when I get to the end of it, uh, they were all black, okay? Now, <clears throat> ex-girlfriend was R word, okay? I was stabbed by blank. Uh, I was mugged by blank at school they took my when i was 17 i had a ring i went to school i was in the sixth form six blank guys came took it off me they said tax black tax or something like that and they were laughing and they walked away well obviously bullied at school by blank but that i mean 
I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Okay, I'll get to that afterwards. I mean, I'm not saying it's the, these kids' fault. It's the white teachers that see it and they don't say anything. I'm more pissed off with them, not with these guys. I mean, these guys, obviously, you're pissed off with them because they commit the crime or they, they do the, the thing that's bad. But I'm more, I'm not angry with them. I'm angry with society that allows it to happen because of fear of being, you know, uh, uh, evil, just to, you know, just to bring it up. You're not allowed to bring anything up because otherwise you are the evil one. So, like, these guys, it, it, you see, in my 20s, when you're young, you don't realise it's not their fault. Of course it's their fault. Like, this guy, the first one who are worthy my ex, of course it's his fault he committed the crime. So that's, I suppose that's, that's, uh, okay, that stands out as like, yeah, he's a criminal. That's a bad thing, okay? He's an R word, okay? But all the other ones, yeah, the one that's, the guy that stabbed me, yes, he's also a criminal. But the other ones where I was, I was hit, you know, I was punched at school. I was actually bruised. I used to come back with a black arm. You know, yes, you can blame the kids. You can, of course, you can blame the kids. But at school, I tell you, we were always held back always held back and the ones that held us back were these kids it was only a small group of them yeah there were some white kids as well that were bad but a high percentage of the kids that were bad let's say and 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 kept us back didn't allow us to to, to study slowed us down were these kids and so yeah I, you know i can hear like my, my switched on um i was gonna say alchemist uh, analyst friend saying, well, they had problems at home because uh, 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 God knows whatever, you know, in industrial racism or whatever they for, fucking call, whatever they call it, you know, uh, institutionalized racism, you know, society didn't accept them, you know, yeah. Uh, that didn't stop their fathers from leaving their mothers though, did it? That's what the problem is, was, and will always be unless people actually bring it up. Where are the dads? These boys, they didn't have dads. Their dad's pissed off with some uh, white woman or somebody else. And then these women had to bring up these boys by themselves. And these women couldn't be the father. So they had to latch on to another, some other fa father figure, you know, some cool guy out there in a gang or whatever, or I don't know, some of these rap artists or whatever. I, I, God knows, whatever. It doesn't mean that all, if you, if you don't have a father, that you're not going to grow up to be a good person. No, but I think it's more difficult, you know. For a woman to bring up a man a woman can't teach a boy how to be a man it's, it's difficult she can give him love and that's really important it may be the most important thing but the boy is always missing something and uh, you know if he can overcome it then great you know but if, what if he can't you know what if he can't then he's gonna look for a father figure and he might find one in the wrong place so anyway all these all these things happened to me in my 20s and 30s so many things i was attacked in my car i was i was spat at you know i was and i had all these these events happen to me in my 20s before i found out that i was adopted when i was 30 like 28 28 years of age coming coming up to my 30s so are you saying you've been racist all your life well it depends what you mean by racist now nobody knows what it means in the 70s, uh, I used to see some racist guys or like scary guys. Yeah, they, they, was, they had skinheads, uh, steel toe caps, <laughs> and they, they were sniffing glue. But even those guys, they used to listen to reggae and stuff like that. So I don't understand. They didn't used to like Asians or gay, gay people, but maybe not so much. They weren't against black people too much. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know. But those were the like the, the traditional kind of racist ones, you know, or scary ones, you know. Nowadays, you don't have to be any, anything. You just, you know, now it's kind of, it's hidden racism. It's uh, unconscious bias, yeah. Well, how do you know that you're racist if it's unconscious? I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. You're racist. Uh, no, I'm not. You've got unconscious bias. How do you know? If it's unconscious to me, how do you know? I know the way you act, the way you talk. So, obviously, this guy must have thought, you know, you know, I made some jokes about Indian... <laughs> Those Indians calling me, uh, burp, burp, you know, oh, this is so offensive, you know. I'm sure some Indian guys watching will just laugh and say, okay, that's not offensive. So who who gets offended? People get offended for a, a, a minority, yeah. Look, I'm a minority as well. You know that BAME, black and minority ethnic. I'm a minority ethnic. I'm Italian. There's not many Italians in, uh, and I'm an ethnic minority, I think. I don't know. So, you know... <laughs> Yeah, 
I'm a... Uh, <laughs> I'm fireproof. You can't say anything to me. It's like a black person's fireproof. I can't be racist. <laughs> so I can't be racist as well. So yeah, I'm going to put that, put it back to that person. Racist attitude. I can't be racist because I'm not white. I am minority ethnic. I'm Italian. God knows whatever I am from Chile or whatever. Yeah. So I can't be racist. Let's see what they're going to say about that. It's like saying to a black person, like, you know, I think there was, um, I think there was something online. One person was complaining about people coming on the boats, about immigration or something. And I don't know, not liking Biden and liking Trump or something. And then another person says, you're racist. You have racist attitude. You have or whatever they said. And then it turns out the person was black. And then the person, the other, the person who said this, crickets you don't hear anything because of course you can't call a black person racist can you <laughs> they're fireproof you can't say that it's true isn't it i mean think about it you know there's only one race that you can call racist only one no it's not in theory it isn't but in actual practice there's only one group that can be can be racist it's only one group so when you see it that way, there's only one group that get tar gets tarnished with this brush. Then you know it's a weapon. It's nothing to do with reality. It's to do with how you see things in the world. There could be a Chinese person who is absolutely racist, like a <laughs> hundred times more racist than a person here in the UK. They won't be called racist because it doesn't fit the um, agenda or what do you call it, the narrative. So anyway, anyway, going back to... Yeah, in my 20s, I was a bit angry with uh, not black people because, <clears throat> you see, back the black community or black people, there's lots of types of black people, isn't there? There's old people, an old lady, an elderly man. There are young children, 10-year-old child or whatever. There are handicapped black people. There are gay or trans people or whatever. There are women. This group here have never hurt me have never punched me, have never stabbed me, have never R-worded my ex-girlfriend, have never spat at me. So why would I be upset with these people? It's only, what's it called? Like, maybe I've got this wrong, a demographic within a demographic. So, you know, the people that commit most crimes in all races, in all groups, are like men between a violent crime, men between, say, I don't know, 16 and 26, uh, something like that with whites, with Asians, with everyone. But, you know, within this group, it's the same. So, uh, you know, would you call a woman who was R-worded, let's say a, a black lady, and I, did, I do know of a black lady who was R-worded by a white guy, and she can't trust the white guys. I mean, she trusts me because I'm her friend, but it's understandable. It's understandable. You know, she has to get it out of her head. But uh, I wouldn't call her, you're a racist because you don't trust white people now. You've tarnished all of us with the same brush. So if I can say that to her, why is it that for myself or anybody else who's been beaten up, stabbed, ex-girlfriend, R-worded, spat at, bullied, in a period of your life where you don't understand things, you know, in, when you're in your early 20s, look, no, hang on, from 17 to in my 20s, mid-20s, mid I had lots of stuff happen to me when I was a, a kid, and I didn't realize that I lived in a black area, of course. If there's gonna be crime committed towards me, it's gonna be this group of people doing it to me, right? It makes sense, now it makes sense, but it doesn't change anything. Even though you want to be like a nice person, subconsciously, sub your subconscious mind, your unconscious mind, doesn't give a shit about political correctness or wokeness, it wants to protect itself. When it sees that demographic, within that demographic, you know, it's going to be scared. It's going to think, hang on, man, uh, there's a group of guys here, trousers all the way down to the fucking knee, all the way down to their knees, you know, and they're walking, doing the bad man walk like that, put their hands above the, you know, like that. You know, <laughs> you want to get away as far as possible. And that is called racism, yeah? If that's called racism, then I must be. And so must millions of people on this planet be. Because in China, the same thing happens. In China, you've got the, the group that is like, you know, the minority, the Xinjiang people, the people from Xinjiang, from the north, was it north, uh, is it northwest area? The people that 
you know the the Western media says, oh, they've been uh, they've been been in prison, they've been killed and stuff like that. I don't know, but the, the Western media doesn't tell you that groups from this area have also committed terrorism in China. I remember when I was living there, there was a guy dressed in black, and he's and he. No, a group, I think, of them. They went on a rampage, stabbing a Chinese in a railway station. And they killed six or seven. I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll try and find the story. And it was a really black day. Everyone on their mobile had just had a black screen because it was a, they called it a black day because these are terrorists. I think that, I'm not sure if they're Muslim, but I think they're Muslim. Oh, sorry, not Muslim, so Islamic terrorists or whatever. Yeah, they, they killed a few people. Also, there was a, a, a report of a bomb inside a, a bus in, I think it was Beijing, and it blew up. So there's lots of things that we don't know about that the media, our media, don't tell us because it's not, um, it's not relevant, you know. Because if the people have to be brainwashed a certain way, you'd have to just hide this information, just hide it, you know. But I was there, I've lived there, and I've seen, I remember I used to, well, I walked past a place where they had these people from Xinjiang. People from Xinjiang are quite nice. They look a bit like me, you know, like Italian or something, or they're a mixture of Turk, or I don't know what they are. But uh, some actually look European, you know. Some women look really nice as well. They're not Chinese. They don't look Chinese. So, and I've met a few, and a few of them are nice people. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying they're not, they're not nice, but some are not nice people, and they do commit crime. The Chinese are, our word, racist towards them. Why? Because they commit a lot of crime, you know? But you can say that's racism, but it's, it's a fact. It's a fact that they don't, a lot of them don't like the, these people, you know? But you don't, you don't call uh, the Chinese racist because we don't know what happens in other parts of the world. I know, I've been there, I've seen it. <clears throat> so, yeah, anyway, I'll tell you a story about those, those guys. I mean, I've seen one of these guys, one of these guys, I was getting onto the bus and he put his finger in my, his hand in my pocket, trying to take some stuff out. I said, hey, what are you doing? It was a small guy and he wasn't Chinese. He was like Turkish kind of, you know. And so uh, another guy, I saw him stealing something from a Chinese woman's uh, on, on the bicycle. You know, he's going behind. And I see, I saw him steal it. And so, for whatever reason they're poor you know they're, you know there are reasons that they maybe you can say oh they have to steal or they have to do things fair enough I, I, I'm not going into the politics of this what I'm saying is other things happen in different parts of the world and people end up disliking these people but not because of racism it's because if certain people certain groups of people commit crimes then you have like an alarm system you're looking out for these kind of people and thinking hang on these Xinjiang people have to be careful because they commit crimes. Or if there's like gypsies, or have to be careful the gypsy might commit crimes. Although there might be good people, good gypsies, good Xinjiang people, good black people, good Sicilian people, or whatever they are, you know. They have a reputation and they don't have a reputation for no reason. Automatically, we feel uncomfortable maybe around them. So this happens in every race. You know, if you go to Africa, there's some tribes that don't like other tribes because they can't trust them, other groups, they can't trust them. But that's the same race, right? It's the same race. Even though they, they wouldn't want to associate with that tribe, but for us, we see black people as all the same. Ah, they're all the same, all blacks, it's not racism. Yeah, but there is hate there. They don't want to be seen as in the, in the same group. You know that word BAME, B-A-M-E, black and minority ethnic. I know Chinese here in the UK that hate that word because they, Chinese are snobby. They don't want to be classed in the same group as black people, as like Indian people, Pakistani. And because they're classed in the same group, they hate it. They hate that word BAME. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. They don't realize that racism it, it exists throughout the world. And there's only one group of people that are not supposed to be racist. But that's racism in itself, isn't it? Because these people, white people, are so above everybody else that they must never be racist. It's, it's, it's beneath them to be racist, but it's okay for everybody else because everybody else is lower than them, than them, than them right? It, it seems like that to me. And we have to show the world, 
you know, that it's wrong to be racist. You go, you try and tell, tell a Pakistani person, a Chinese, a Chinese person, that it's wrong to be racist when you see racism. It's, it's The thing is, these people don't see racism anywhere else. They only see it inside. And these people usually are full of something called white guilt. They're so guilty. You know, they feel so guilty. And they have to, like, tell everybody of their, their race that they're wrong. Because obviously they're superior. They're, they're higher up here. You know, they're, they've got the halo, you know, and wings and levitating above everybody else. And then saying, you are wrong. You know, the masses are wrong. The vulgar masses are wrong. We know everything. And you should be ashamed of yourself. No, you shouldn't be ashamed of yourself. Everybody else does it. And it's not called racism. Once everybody else is tarnished with the same brush, then yes, people will start listening. Well, anyway, uh, I don't think I'm racist. But then again, it's difficult because I don't know what it bloody means. What does that word mean? I can safely say to you, I'm not racist. If I knew what it meant, <laughs> I would say, yes, I'm racist or no, I'm not racist. If I knew what the word meant, you know, there are definitions that keep changing. So it's a political thing. You know, like, was it before BLM, there was a definition, you know, like, racism is this. And then after BLM came out, you know, it changed. The definition is, no, no, uh, because people realize that it's not only black people, not only white people that are racist, black people, Asian people, uh, people in the Middle East are racist too. So they had to change it and say, no, no, racism uh, can only happen if... Uh, if the, the group doing the racism, you know, being racist, has power, yeah. So, like, black people or Asian people, because they don't have any power over you, they can't be racist. They can say all the racist words in the world, but they can never be racist because they don't have any power over you. You know, they're not in positions of power or influence or anything like that. That's funny, isn't it? Because only up to a few months ago, we had the mayor... The mayor of London is is a, is, is non-white, right? Then you had Rich, was it Richie Sunak, Richard Sunak, or whatever his name is. But he wasn't. He's not a Cockney or anything, you know, non-white. The what is it? The Welsh president or prime minister. Then you've got the Scottish one. None of these are are white, and yet they can't be. These people can't be racist because they're not in positions of power or influence, or they have, they don't have any power. <laughs> what a load of bollocks! So the person here saying that you have racist attitudes. What racist attitude do I have? If I make a joke about some guys that, you know, that keep destroying my brain by, by, by uh, sir, and I make a joke about the way they talk. Okay, it's funny. You know, I like Indian people. As I said, I like chicken korma, but uh, I used to go to school with Indian guys and I used to be friends with Indian guys, more than white guys. And then someone comes along because I say, but, but I am, I've got a racist attitude. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> well, okay. If I have a racist attitude, I have a racist attitude. The only problem with that is in our society, being called a racist is uh is like being is being called evil you're an evil human being and, and what do you do to evil human beings what's the next step you have to punish them either ridicule them online and that's the, at least at the very least you have to ridicule them online demonetize them cancel them because you can't kill people nowadays but mind you <laughs> that's it that does happen that does happen yeah i'm not going to talk about that but <laughs> and, and you know it will openly happen it does openly happen, but I'm not I'm not saying anything. Uh, I won't say anything. So, like, to my black viewers or Asian viewers, you know, I don't know. Racism. I don't understand it. And you know, like, you guys know, you guys who are black and Asian, you know it's all these white knights. They come along, they come along and say, yeah, uh, they talk about their own kind, other other whites being, not their own kind, sorry, their own race being racist. And it's only because they think they're above everybody in their group, right? And so they come along and say, they, they show their virtue, you know, their virtue signal, you know, we're on your side, you know, like these guys, the vulgar, they're vulgar, they don't, they're the idiots that don't understand anything, and they're racist, you know, they're evil, you know. We're above them, you know, we can teach them how to be good people, you know. It's like a religion. And, uh, will protect you from, from them. As I always say, if you're black or Asian or whatever, and these white knights come along and say, yeah, I'm racist or whatever, they're trying to show themselves that they're your friend, they're your 
ally and they brainwash you with stuff like um, political correctness and uh, oh, the one where uh, the white guilt is like a thousand percent. What is it? But just being born white is like a fucking is like a sin. Oh, what is it? Um, and they teach us in schools as well. Oh, I forgot it. I forgot that word. Sorry. I'll, I'll think about it afterwards. Yeah. Oh, the word is here. Yeah. Yeah, that word. And uh, you have to ask yourselves, right? If this person, this angel, this white knight comes along, very powerful, very strong, intelligent, you know, and knows everything, is there protect to protect you. Who's going to protect you from him? Nobody. So you have to think that. If you're black or Asian, okay, just, just go, go along with it. We're all racist. Everyone's evil. Okay, and these people, all those woke ones, angels have risen up and they say, we'll be your friend. Who's going to protect you from them? Use your own brain. Use, use your own mind. You know you're, you're Asian, you're black. You know we're all racist. We all have, uh, we discriminate and, and sometimes we're intolerant. But there's a reason for it, okay? I think none of us are really evil. I mean, we don't go around bloody shooting people just because of a, a culture or race or something. It does happen, but those people are nutters. They're, they're crazy, you know? Like, just because things happened to me in the past and I didn't understand at the time, now I'm older and I realise, yeah, some of these, like, the, the guy who R-worded my ex and the guy who stabbed me, those are criminals. But the rest of them, they, they're not good people, but it's not, it's partly their fault, but partly, you know, the way they were brought up or whatever, you know. Well, you can say that about these two, but they took it to the next level to the criminal level where you actually hurt another human being, then they're criminals and they can... <laughs> right? But these ones here, where they bully, where they do stuff, they're still at the level where they haven't committed, you can say, like a really bad crime. But it will affect everyone around them. And the way they see them will affect, unfortunately, other people who are good people who've got nothing to do with this. So, you know, my racist attitude, I don't know what racist attitude I have. Um... I don't know. You know, a lot of these, like, woke lefties or <laughs> whatever they are, these white knights, these these guys who think they're really intelligent, you know, they don't even have any black friends. They, they're they very analytical about it and they think this is the right thing, yeah. Because it's the flavour of the month, it's the flavour of this, this period in, in time. It wasn't like this, like, in the 70s or 60s and it won't be like this in the year 2050 or whatever. The things that are woke now will be like taboo in the future. So it's always changing. You know, what is really bad now won't be bad in the future. So just going back to what this person was saying, you know, I can understand now your racist attitude. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Please tell me what my racist attitudes are. Is it because I've made jokes of like some Indian guys or Pakistani or whatever, where, where they're they from? and their accent yeah i made it uh, yeah i don't know is that a racial slur or something i'm sorry but i didn't mean it as a, <laughs> you know they're bothering me and they like i mean i just explained what happened and then i don't know what other racist attitude i have and i suppose if if i do have a racist if, if that's you know i mean whatever atti attitudes we have there'll be a, a group of people that say you're racist or there'll be a group of people that say you're really cool you know so I don't know, to you or to other people, I may be a racist, but that means that probably you feel that so many people are racists. And the people who, I would say that the people who are really sensitive to all this racism are racist themselves because they're constantly thinking about it and constantly looking for it. You know, sometimes I have uh, black kids come to my house and sleep over because my daughter, you know, has got friends in the, in the college. And I treat them really nice. I treat them as almost like friends that I used to have at school. I used to jo I joke with them and uh, I love having them around. And I bet you these woke types, the feminazis and all these people, all these like middle class, class white English families, they've never had a black person in their house. <laughs> and yet they go on about this stuff, you know, because they're high up and they're, you know, they're um, preaching to the masses. Because you know, they think they're higher than everybody else. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, what is racism? Am I racist? And then let's say, let's say society says, yes, you are definitely racist by 
this criteria, you are definitely racist because you made that joke, and uh, you you said like a specific demographic within a demographic is a you know um, has caused seventy percent of violent crime according to the FBI. Even though it's true, you're not allowed to say it. So by this criteria, you are racist. Okay, if society says that I'm racist, then I must be. I don't know. So. Uh, what am I supposed to do with that? So am I supposed to be punished now? I mean, the question I ask is, do I go out, do I go online and talk bad about black people, Asian people? Nope, not really. I don't, not, I don't think I have, but in my heart, do I hate them? That's the most important part. No, I don't, I don't. Look at my face. You know I'm being honest. I do not, I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think, do I hate black people? No, I don't. Otherwise, when, it, when these black kids come to the house, why would I be happy, so happy to talk to them and be close to them? If somebody hates black people, they don't even want them in the house. What I don't like is all this woke wokery, all this stuff, you know, blaming people from Europe, European descent, for everything. I, I, you know, I don't like it. I just don't like it. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand for it. I'm not going to uh, say that whiteness is bad in itself. No, it isn't. It isn't. You can think that way, you know, and you can be a lefty or whatever, you're a fucking Marxist or whatever. No. Yeah, you can be what you want, you know, but I have to be what I have to be. And I don't hate you. I don't hate you. I have no hate towards you. It's just annoying, really annoying, that there has to be a bloody wedge always between blacks and whites. I, I want this wedge to be taken off. Like, just take it off and we can be friends. It doesn't mean that if a black person or this group does something bad, I'm not going to say anything about it. No, I'm going to bloody say something about it. And that's what these people don't like. Shh, don't say that. That's racist. <laughs> All this sensitivity has created massive problems. You know, you can go up to a black, uh, a black guy and say, uh, you're just about to say blue and he, and he might, you know, you might be offended because you, you almost said black or something or... I don't know. I mean, it's a stupid example, but there's so much sensitivity now. And I'm sure that people have been attacked for uh, other people, like black guys, misunderstanding something. In China, it's really funny. There's a <laughs> there's a word called... Okay, the word for... Chi I'm talking in Chinese language here, okay? So don't, don't bloody dislike or tell YouTube I'm, I'm some evil person. There's a there's a word in, in Chinese that means this and that. This is jaga. That is nega. So in Beijing, you say jaga. There's a there's an accent, jaga and nega. So this that jaga nega. But in some places, the 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 jaga the a becomes e, like like or jaga. Jaga. It's more tight. Jaga and nega. Jaga nega. So this is Chinese language. I'm not talking in English, okay? But in Chinese, sometimes when you're saying, when you're thinking, oh, um, uh, that uh, person that. Uh, they say, so that is nega, okay? But some people, maybe from the south or other areas, it, it's a bit tighter, it's nigger. So they say, ah, oh, oh, nigger, 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 that that person, that person. And they're always saying it. So you have these conversations on the street where the person says, ah, oh, nigger, oh, nigger, 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 like that. They say it a few times, right? So <laughs> there were a few, a few black guys <laughs> that came to Beijing. I think it was Beijing. And when I was, I was living there, and it, it, it's it, for me it's hilarious because because basically this this group of guys right they heard people around them saying ah oh, nigga 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 and they were kissing their teeth going because <laughs> they thought they were saying the n word but it's just an it's an actual Chinese word so if you say that that dog nigga gao nigga gao or you know that's their language they can't change their language. I bet you the work will try and change their language and say, no, you can't use that language. You can't, use, you can't say that anymore. Been used for 5,000 years or whatever. You can't say it because our Marxist policies now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That, that was a funny story. You, know, you could see these guys like turning around, kissing their teeth. Because like some Chinese guy was saying to his friend, oh, yeah, it's that... That what's his name? That person and was just going, oh, you nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> you just imagine the situation. <laughs> oh.
Yeah, it is bad. But... And so to end to end the video, right? You can't put your value system, your your ideas, onto these Chinese people. Okay, your ideas are new. They're woke. Their ideas. I mean, their language has been around for thousands of years. So you can't say. You can't say the word uh, "chega nigger" because it sounds too much like the N word, uh, bastard. No, you can't, and neither can you. Neither can you expect a person that grew up in the thirties or forties or seventies. We had different values, different language, different. We grew up in a different time. Now we have to com conform to your wokery. We have to conform to. Oh, you can't say this is a racist. Blah, blah, blah. You know what was racist then. No, what was normal then is racist now. So you have to understand that uh, we, my, I'm in my 50s, even in their 40s, people's in their 40s, you know, grew up in a different time. I know what racism, racism for me is like beating up people of another race because, they're, because of their race or hurling insults at them when you drive by or spitting or something like that, or just treating them differently, treating them, you know, badly, you know. I would never do that. I... I and I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be friends with people that did that as well. You know, that's just bad. It's nothing to do with racism. It's just evil. It's bad. You, you can't do that. You know. So anyway, that's my answer to <laughs> the person. The person was really, I think it was polite. But uh, yeah, I know. When the person says your racist attitude, I have to answer back and say, what are you talking about? My, my racist attitude. First of all, what is racism to you? And where did I show the, these racist attitude? If it was the jokes, you know, about like those those scammers, those Indian scammers, and then when I tried to put the phone down, they said, "No, no, but, but," and I said, "No, no, fucking but." Is that is that that's where my all my racism comes from? It's just a joke. It's such a joke, and I'm not going to apologize to anybody apart from if there is any Indian guys that are offended. Then I'm I apologize. I say I'm sorry, but not to anybody else. Because those people are offended for them. No, I'm not going to apologize to you. You know what I mean? You know, why should I apologize to you? I'm going to apologize to any person of that race, of that group that may feel offended. Because I didn't mean it to, to, to be offensive, you know? Um, like, if an Indian person, like, started talking, tried to speak Cockney or whatever, and made a joke about it, white people, would I be really offended? No. So why is it? that I or white people are so above everybody else that we have a different standard. It's because we are better than everyone else. No, we're not better than everyone else. We're the, the same. It just shows the racism and the, uh, the in, entitlement or whatever of these people, these woke people. They are really, just by the way they think, they are the racist ones themselves. <laughs> Because they think that we should have a much higher standard than everyone else, than everybody else. It just goes against everything that they're saying. That like we're not all equal, are we? Some are more equal than others. Yeah, well, anyway. Uh, if I ask myself, am I racist? Nope, I'm not. But this, it's just a, a straightforward answer. But what I mean by racist or racism isn't what another person might mean. You know, if you make it just a small joke like that, if you... If you don't listen to like a lot of drill music or whatever, you have to have all this criteria to make you okay. If you don't have one of those, then you must be racist. Or if you make a slight error, a slight mistake, you know. So let's say I made that mistake, okay? It's not a mistake, it's just a joke. And unless the person is really upset, then I'll apologize, okay? But if that same person made a joke about whites, I would not be offended. So where, where is the racism? I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it as a problem. I can joke about this bloke. He can joke about me. It's over. We, we joked about our, our, ourselves, about our, our differences. That's called communication, you know. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> There's so many fucking things to be worried about in, in life, about wars and stuff and uh, mental health. And, and, but this actually affects mental health when people are bullied and being told that they're evil. Because being racist is just, it comes down to being evil. You are evil. No, it doesn't mean you're evil. It does mean you're evil. Anybody who's guilt tripped with that guilt card, you know, that's the whole point is to make them feel ashamed. Shame on you. 
all that. Anyway, I'll speak to you guys in another video. This is supposed to be about 10 minutes, but I have to open up all the windows now and go for a drive to get some air. Yeah, so this video, I suppose, was about uh, something that maybe many of us, especially, you know, if you're older, you come from a different generation and, you know, the goalposts have moved from the 1960s or 70s to now. And what you thought was okay in the past is not okay now. And it's not, not only one thing that's not okay, it's multiple things that are not okay. Unless you, you're flexible and you adjust to the times, then you're going to be called that name and maybe other names, you know. That's just one area, you know. It's a big area, but, you know, how do you deal with it? I'm not going to change who I am just because society says this is wrong. You have to, you know, I just avoid people, you know, but I, I avoid made. I mean, I just do it on, on YouTube. I wouldn't do it, you know, in front of an Asian person. No way. That, that's so disrespectful. You know, I know my boundaries, you know, I know, you know, I know what my my limits are. And I know, yeah, some people will get offended or will, will see it as racist. But again, the question is, what is racism? What, what is racism? Racism is different to, to different people, you know? There are different levels. What's it called? A theory. Critical race theory. I think the theory says that you're, you're racist just for being born. So the child that is born in six months' time or two, three years' time is already racist just because that, that little sperm is white. <laughs> and it's, 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 that sperm is racist. You know, it's absolutely bonkers, absolutely crazy, because that child is going to be born already with original sin. You see, it's like a religion, isn't it? It's just like a religion. That child doesn't know what the hell hit it. <laughs> it knows that it's evil from when it's born. It has to have that white guilt as soon as it's born. Yeah, that critical race theory, that's an evil theory, really evil. You know, it teaches kids that basically they are guilty, and uh, it teaches black kids that kind of that they're inferior as well that they're the victim you know and that's that's really horrible for both races you know it's trying to it's trying to i don't know what it is it's some, some marxist co communist thing it's trying to uh, correct things of the past yeah yeah by creating a new racism yeah and that's the real racism i think the real racism is that the the masses now the the white working class not the middle classes, but the white working class. They're all evil. They're all rubbish. They're all idiots, dumb, racist, you know. And they're going to be tarnished with all this brush of racism. Uh, I don't know. I still don't know what the hell this word means. So if you guys... No, don't tell me because I don't want to know. It's just my rant today. So I'll speak to you guys another time. I don't know if this is interesting for, 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 for any of you. And then after this video, if you guys think I'm much more evil than I really am, because I, I dare to mention it, I dare to be honest and say some things have happened in my life, and in a certain part of the period of my life, I'll be honest, I didn't like a group of people within a race, not a race, but young guys who had a bad attitude walking like this and talking a certain way. <laughs> I remember at school, there, there's some bad black kids. And they have an accent, like, I grab you up, give me some fucking money. You know, what the hell are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to, you know, grow up and, and think, oh, yeah, yeah, these young, young black guys are nice. No, you have your own <laughs> defense system, you know, and like the person who said, you know, racist attitude, just because I, I, me I just made a joke just now, like, that I am like the next, the worst thing, you know, apart from Hitler, you know. <laughs> but if that person met me, and spent a day with me, they'd see that um, I'm a soft person, I'm a kind person. If I see a black guy or Asian guy, I want to sit down and talk to them because I hardly see any Asians or black guys. But it's funny how they're the angelic types. They show themselves to be like really good. Even black guys and Asians will actually buy into all their crap, but it's actually not true. Maybe they're the ones that are not good and us, you know, the ones that are just normal, everyday people, that we are the, we are the good ones because we don't think about this stuff. They're the ones constantly talking about it, constantly thinking about it. And it seems as though I'm constantly thinking about it because, the, well, the whole, the video is about this, but I'm not gonna, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But it's a, a subject of the times, isn't it? You always bloody hear it, you know? I don't know what I am. I'm Gerald. That's it.
someone wants to call me that name, then that's their reality. It's not mine. You know, what, what can I do? Um, they come up, they come up with all this bollocks, you know, like, have you ever had a black girlfriend? No. Would you date a black woman? Uh, maybe. Maybe. That implies an element of doubt. <laughs> so you must be racist. It's just like someone, you know, some of these people saying, um, would you ever date a trans? And then someone says, well, no way, because it's a man. It's not a man, it's a woman. Okay, okay, I wouldn't date a trans. You must be transphobic. But would you date a gay man? No, you must be homophobic. Would you date a black man? No, you must be racist. Fucking hell. That's called bullying, isn't it? Like, why don't you have a choice? Oh, it's the reason why you got there, why, why you choose that, though. Hmm. Did you ever think about that? Don't want to think about that. People should be free to make their own decision to be whatever they want to be, even the R word. If someone is racist towards Italians or whites, they have that right to be. I'm not going to say anything to them. I don't like it, but I'm not going to stop them, you know? What I'm going to stop is this bloody, this video, because it's hot in here. <laughs> All right, see you guys in another video. Definitely, I'm going to get like millions. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to get, I'm going to get like, 80% <laughs> dislikes from all those woke guys. Um, yeah. So I hope you you guys found this entertainment entertaining or, I don't know, you, you're maybe pissed off or maybe bored or maybe liked. <laughs> so like, share, dislike. If you want to subscribe, I'm not going to say you're going to see more of this stuff. I, I talk about many things, so... Yeah, turn on the notification if you do subscribe. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. Thank you guys for donating. All the guys that have donated millions of quid to me, you know, like all the money to me. You know. Thank you that you guys who have donated even five pounds for the buy me a coffee is really brilliant. I don't get all that five pounds, by the way. I get like uh, three pounds because buy me a coffee, take away two quid. So I get about three quid. So, but even that three quid, thank you very much. I'm, I really appreciate that, you know, from my heart, you know. Uh, and if you didn't donate, thank you for donating your time for watching this video. YouTube, don't pay me a lot of money. This month, I've, got, I've made about 170 pounds from that. I think they, they're gonna take tax off. They're left with 100 quid or whatever, I don't know. 100 quid in a month for making five videos uh, a week isn't a lot so but i'm still grateful that you like you've invest invested you donated your own time your life force to, to watch this so i'm grateful for that okay so that's the end of the a long video <laughs> and i'll speak to you tomorrow bye do you believe me that i'm a lonely soul